So, have you ever found yourself asking one of these questions? What is the best four-man team? Which four classes are gonna get me through every dungeon in the game? What should my fourth character be? Well, in Dofus, four seems to be the magic number. Of course, two for duos sometimes can be as well. But the reason four is so significant is because all the dungeons scale down to teams of four. So what is the answer to these questions? Well, stay tuned and that's exactly what I'm gonna try to help answer in this video. If you're excited for my insights into the realm of the four, smack that like button for me and show your support. It would greatly help me out. Also, if you're new here and you don't wanna miss out on any of my future guides, tips, and gameplay, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you know exactly when my videos go live. All right, let's do this. Dofus has eight very unique classes. Each class is built around three main roles, of which there are eight to choose from. All right, you have the debuffer, which is all about making the enemies weaker. You have the tank, which means that it's a character that can take large amounts of damage on themselves. You have the protector, which can reduce or eliminate damage to your teammates. The healer heals the team. Damage dealers are people that specialize in doing large amounts of damage. Positioners are all about moving themselves, enemies, or allies around the map. Summoners are people who can summon allies in to help with the team. And the buffer is all about making the team stronger. All right, important note, just because the class you're looking at doesn't have one of the three that you're looking for, doesn't mean that they won't be able to perform some of that ability. For example, the rogue has zero healing abilities, but they have ways to still heal themselves. They have the extraction spell, which can pull health out of an enemy. They can also equip weapons that allow them to heal allies if they strike them with that. And then of course, you've also got the dofuses that you can equip to get random heals under certain conditions. That's just one example of a class that isn't necessarily designed for a specific role, but they can still find a way to make it work. All right, when it comes to building a solid PVM team, I like to boil it down to four roles. One damage dealer, one healer, one positioner, and then the fourth character I like to call a support role. The support role is somebody who's going to fill in the gaps of what your team might be lacking. When you're trying to figure out who you want to play as that support character, you're looking for somebody who's going to take care of those quirky, unexpected things that can suddenly make a fight extremely difficult. Enemies that turn invisible. Enemies that can buff themselves for several turns. Maybe enemies with lots of MP, AP, or range. Enemies that can transform your characters or your teammates. Perhaps enemies that use traps or glyphs. And these are just a few of the things. Now there's no way you'll be able to accomplish everything, but these are the kinds of things you wanna keep in the back of your mind. You wanna make sure you got somebody on your team that can help deal with those miscellaneous things that pop up while you're fighting. All right, time for the fun part, picking a team. But there are a few notes I wanna throw out here just real quick for you. One, there is no such thing as a perfect team. Every class has strengths and weaknesses. The more people you get on your team, the stronger your strengths get and the less your weaknesses become. But there's still always going to be certain enemies, certain bosses, certain dungeons, certain rooms, certain map layouts that are gonna be harder for some classes over others. Second, it's all about having fun. It doesn't matter if you pick a class, it's got a huge damage dealing ability. If you're not enjoying the class, you're not going to be having fun. So make sure you pick classes that you're having a good time with. If you pick a class and you're not having fun with them, don't be afraid to swap them out. And third, this is just my strategy on how I build a team and the recommendations that I use for building a team, but it is not the only way. There is no right or wrong way to build a team. Well, there may be some wrong ways to build a team, but you can, you can do whatever you want. You can have fun with this. So just keep that in mind. These are just my suggestions and ultimately have fun. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you want to pick a class to fill each one of those roles. Yes, you could build a four-man team of just damage dealers. You could build a four-man team of just healers. 
but you're going to run into roadblocks, obviously. Picking a role for each of your characters is what will help you decide on spells, equipment, trophies, what element you want to do as you move forward with each of your characters. There's no real point in stacking a bunch of plus heals on your strength-based high damage dealing IOP. Vice versa, there's no point in stacking a whole bunch of lock on your intelligence healing Sedita. Knowing the role that you plan on with your class helps you decide what you're going to use that class for as you move forward. So in this guide, I'm going over the idea of having one damage dealer, healer, positioner, and support role. Usually when building a new team, you typically have at least one or two classes you've always been curious about trying. So I say start with those. Grab the one or two classes that you've just always wanted to try, look into them, and figure out which roles they're going to fill. Don't worry so much about if there's some overlap on those classes. For example, if you pick a class that can both heal and position, like the Fog or not, don't be worried about, oh, well, they can do both. Just figure out, okay, on my team, my Foggernaut is going to do this or this. That's the main goal of my Foggernaut. Even though you might use them for both, you just want to establish what the main role is going to be. It's always nice to have a little overlap in your abilities. One thing I recommend when you're picking out your team, even if you've already got a couple that you want to use, come here to the Dofus website. They have this neat filtration list right over here on the side, where if you wanted to see which classes have damage dealing built into them, you can check this box and it's going to narrow it down to the classes that they have designated as having the ability for damage dealing. Perhaps you're wanting something that can damage deal and position. Well, you can check two boxes and it's going to narrow the list down a little bit more and maybe that'll help you fine tune where it is that you want to go you want something a little more specific this is a great way to make that happen and you might be surprised to find out which classes fall underneath certain categories you didn't know they could actually do that role in my experiences it's always the fourth character that is the hardest one to choose i think because of two reasons one it's your last character that you're choosing and you probably still have a few more that you would love to have in your team. The other reason it can be a little difficult is because you are you might be nervous that maybe I'm going to miss something. Maybe I haven't covered everything. Well, this is where you want to step back for just a second and review the three that you've already done. Here's a few ideas that you want to keep an eye out for to make sure that if you don't have these covered, at least some of these covered with the three you've already picked, maybe keep these in mind when you start looking for your fourth character. Do you have somebody on your team that can unbewitch? There's lots of enemies out there that can cast huge buffs and vulnerabilities and everything else on themselves or on your teammates. And you want to make sure you got somebody that can reduce the cooldowns or the number of turns on those spells. Do you have somebody who can AP or MP buff your team? Sure, you don't have to have that, but it is nice to have somebody on your team that can give you extra AP and MP in certain situations. Do you have people on your team that can both push and pull? Those are two different directions that you would need to be able to do with the enemies or the allies. Some classes can do a lot of pushing, but they have no pull. Some can do lots of pulling, but they have no push. So it's a good idea to make sure you got at least somebody on your team that can do a little bit of both. Do you have a mix of both close range and long range distance attackers? You build a full four man team of nothing but melee damage dealers that could get old really fast on some really long range maps or especially in the beginning when your whole squad's starting out with just three MP. Does every member of your team use a glyph, a portal, a summon, or anything along that line? You grab yourself a Sadita, Rogue, Osa, and Ilio all these classes need empty spaces on the map to be able to utilize some of their spells and you could be creating for yourself a very nightmare situation trying to figure out where you can put all that stuff on the map. Can anybody on your team detect enemies that have become invisible? There's lots of enemies throughout the game that will turn invisible on you. Some for short term, some for long term. Having somebody on your team that at least has a chance of detecting somebody that's invisible can make a big difference. Now again, I'm not saying you have to have all those things covered, but those are a few things to maybe keep in mind when you're looking at your team. See if you've got all those checked off. If you do, it makes picking a support character much easier. If you don't have any of those things covered, you might really want to pay attention to who you get to fill in some of the most important roles. That can be the difference between a fun fight, a fair fight, or a terrible long fight. <laughs> Thank you.
There are endless possibilities for teams you could make out of those 18 classes. That's part of what makes building squads so much fun are the crazy combinations you can come up with. However, for those of you who are just looking for some ideas, I've got seven I have built for you to try out. The first one I got, I'm just calling the beginner classic. It's a very straightforward team that will take you a long ways in this game. Your damage dealer is going to be the strength IOP. The healer is going to be an intelligence any. Your positioner is going to be a chance panda and your support will be the agility craw. The second set I'm calling a modified beginner classic because it's also a very straightforward set, but just a little bit of change to it. Your damage dealer is going to be the agility masquerader. Healer is still going to be an intelligence any. Your positioner is going to be a strength panda and your support is going to be a chance in you. The next one I'm calling the range squad and it's all about doing damage from a distance. Damage dealer is going to be a strength craw. Healer is going to be an intelligence sedita. Positioner is going to be the chance foggernaut. And your support is going to be an agility elio. All right, this one's called the rogue squad. And it's all about trying to utilize rogue bomb walls to the best of your ability. The damage dealer obviously is going to be an intelligence rogue. The healer is going to be an agility foggernaut. Positioner is going to be a chance panda. And your support is going to be a strength Eka. This one I'm calling close combat. It's all about in your face damage and the healing is going to be a bit tricky. So this one's going to be heavily dependent upon damage reduction or elimination. And you'll notice that in the squad that I've picked. Your damage dealer is going to be a strength zeller. The healer is going to be an intelligence fecca. Your positioner is going to be a chance masquerader and the support is going to be an agility in you. This next one I'm calling the Sacrier's Dream. It's all about changing the flow patterns of the map and providing a lot of attributes for a Sacrier to be able to manipulate and move its way around the map quickly. So your big damage dealer is obviously gonna be the Strength Sacrier. The healer is going to be an Intelligence Sedita. Positioner is going to be an Agility Zeller. And the support will be a Chance Osa. And my last squad here, I'm calling Expert Decisions because I feel like if you're looking for a fun but challenging group, this could be a really fun one to work with. Your damage dealer is going to be a Strength Sram. Your healer is going to be an Intelligence Eka. Positioner is going to be a Chance Foggernaut. And your support is going to be an Agility Strength Hupper Mage. I say Agility Strength because I'm counting on those elements playing off each other. And anyone familiar with the Hupper Mage knows that it's a multi-element class. Knowing which ones are going to play together is important. So that's why I picked Agility Strength. All right, hopefully there was some information in there that will help you build your next squad. If there's a squad that you really enjoy and you want to share it with everybody to possibly enjoy as well, leave it in the comments. Let us know what that squad is, put the class and the elements so that we know what to build. Or if one of the seven that I mentioned caught your interest, let me know that in the comments below as well. I'm curious to get some feedback from you guys on that. If you got something useful out of this and you could do me a huge favor and just smack that like button, it would really help the channel out. Also, don't forget, if you're new here and you don't want to miss out on any of my future Dofus guides, tips, or gameplay, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live. Until next time, you all be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>